Welcome back to Better Than Before. I'm your host, Tony Richards, and we're going to talk about why people fail to execute. You know, back when I first started uh, consulting and coaching probably 15, 16 years ago, um, the main issue was strategy. I got hired uh, quite a bit to come in and work on strategic plans and strategic principles and differentiation and all those kinds of things. And I still do that kind of work uh, with our clients. But now the focus is on, yeah, we got this great plan, uh, but why can't we get our people to execute the plan? And so uh, this could be in that context. It could also be in the context of 2019 where coming to the end of first quarter and you put these plans together and the first quarter is almost gone and you haven't executed anything yet. So why do people fail to execute? Part of it is, uh, as all things are, you know, that I talk about, part of it is mindset. And you have to get the idea into your head that failing is just a part of succeeding. Sometimes people are so afraid of failure that they won't move on a plan. They won't do some of it because they think, I'm going to fail and I don't want to fail. And the best way not to fail is to not execute. But what you find if you do an analysis of it and you start doing research on really successful people, you're going to find out that they've simply gone through more failure, more rejection, and more pain than other people have. Failure and rejection is just part of moving yourself beyond your limits and beyond mediocrity and beyond average. And I still do not believe that anybody wants to be average. No one wants to get up in their average bed and uh, have an average breakfast and take an average shower and uh, go to their average car and uh, kiss their average spouse goodbye and go to their average job and have an average day and maybe have an average lunch and get home after a average work and perhaps go to see an average movie. Nobody wants to do average, but some reason we get back to being average and we get back to being mediocre because we're afraid of failing. Knowledge itself, you know, you've probably heard knowledge is power. Knowledge itself is not power. It's potential power. So a battery has potential power in it. It's not until you plug that battery into a flashlight or into a remote control that the power gets accessed. It's actually doing something and it's executing what you bought the battery for, what you bought the storage for, what you bought the potential power for is now actually turning into power because it is turning into ability. And doing something and executing things that you learn turns knowledge to skill and ability. People don't execute for, you know, fear of failure. That's one. Another reason is they simply don't believe in their vision. So the first thing you have to do is realize that human beings are given imagination for a reason. We were given imagination so that we can change our circumstances, first in our minds, then in our words, and then in our action. But you're going to have to believe in what you've envisioned and if you don't believe it, it's not going to turn to behavioral action. Another reason people don't execute is because they get paralyzed. They become procrastinators. They become perfectionists. And they don't break their plan down into action steps or chunks. You have to execute in chunks. Time comes at you second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, week by week, month by month, quarter by quarter, and year by year. It comes to you in chunks. So you have to start getting into the flow of the stream of time that is coming to you and break down your executable action items to fit into the chunks of time you're being presented with. Another reason people don't execute is they simply don't believe in themselves. They don't think that they have the skills. They don't think that they have the smarts. They don't think that they have what it takes. They haven't relentlessly practiced to get to a place of achievement where most people that do it on a fairly consistent basis over a long period of time, people call those folks geniuses. 
and you haven't accessed your genius because you haven't, you're like the battery that has the potential power inside. You haven't plugged in to what you're supposed to be doing. So therefore you only still have potential. You aren't accessing any place. Uh, you aren't accessing any of that and putting it into an ability or skill so that you too can be called a genius. Last reason people don't execute is fear and conditioning. Sometimes we chase ideas that are created by other people. Sometimes we chase ideas that are defined by society. Sometimes we have a fear over what our friends think, what our peer group thinks, sometimes even over what our parents think. And all of these different things that are set up by other people rather than setting our own value system and setting ourselves up for what we expect out of ourselves. If our fear and conditioning defeat us because of other people's ideas over what we should be, that's terrible. So we need to relook at what are we living for? Are we living someone else's idea? I, I've known people in the past. Uh, one uh, fellow I'm thinking of right now, um, he told me once, I was coaching him, and he was a dentist. He was a third-generation dentist. And he told me that there are at least two or three other things he'd rather be than a dentist. But his grandfather was a dentist, and his dad was a dentist, and he just was raised to be a dentist. But he didn't like being a dentist. And finally, he broke out of that and decided to do something different. And today, I can tell you, he's one of the happiest people because he's executing on his own dream, not the idea or circumstance that was actually set up for him by someone else that he could never feel fulfilled doing that. So those are some reasons why people don't execute. What are some tactics we can use in order to be productive? So how can we execute and be productive? Number one, how protective of your time are you? Do you have a sense of urgency? You're one tick less off of this amazing journey every second you live. Technology has advanced further than we've adapted to deal with. We're in a constant state of reaction. When that little text sound goes off, a signal shoots into our brain that says, oh, somebody loves me, somebody wants to talk to me, and we go and, and try to figure out who's on the phone or who's on the text or what's the alert that's grabbing our attention. Our email goes off, and we want to look down in the lower right-hand side of our computer screen to see who's emailing us and what we want. Instead of remaining focused uh, and being proactive, we're reactive. Number two, ask yourself every single day, what are the five most important priorities I have to do today that'll make a difference in what it is that I want to do? If you do five things a day that significantly advance you forward and you work Monday through Friday, that's 25 things you would do this week to advance your vision and advance your productivity. That would be awesome. And you'd be in the top 5% of all high achievers and performers in the world if you did that. Number three, set a countdown clock. It's been proven by science and also by people who've done it that deep concentrated focus for 45 minutes where all distractions are eliminated is the highest productivity amount of stretch time that you can do. No multitasking. And let's define multitasking. Multitasking is doing two or three things at the same time. Let me tell you what multitasking is not. Multitasking is not something that you're doing, but you're not doing. So in other words, uh, let's think about somebody in the kitchen who's washing dishes. Just because you have a clothes washer going at the same time you're washing dishes, that is not multitasking. Yes, you have something else going at the same time, but it's, you don't have to be doing it. Multitasking is actually like the person you see riding the very tall bicycle while uh, spinning plates on their fingers of both hands and on their head and on both feet while balancing the bicycle. That's multitasking. And very few people actually do it. 
But every time you take on another task at the very same time you're doing another one, the excellence of that original task is reduced 80%, right? So be fully engaged, be deeply concentrated and focused for 45 minutes, then get up and stretch, take deep breaths, take a five to 10 minute break, then transition back into your activity for another deep concentrated 45 minutes focus. Immediate gratification addiction. What is going to give me pleasure right now? You have to avoid that because immediate pleasure creates long-term pain. Short-term pain creates long-term pleasure. Put yourself through enough short-term pain to get where you want to be long-term. The pain of discipline weighs ounces and the pain of regret weighs tons. You'll experience one of these two. Which one will you choose today? Thank you for listening to Better Than Before with Tony Richards, a business leaders podcast powered by Clear Vision Development Group. For more resources from Tony, visit clearvisiondevelopment.com. Join us next time for another episode of Better Than Before with Tony Richards. Oh,